Hello everybody, this is John Brewer. Today on Survival Exploration 201, we're going to go over the mechanics of electrical power in Space Engineers. Most cube blocks in Space Engineers draw electrical power at one point or another. Power draw is given in watts. Some draw power at all times, like gyroscopes in the conveyor system, while others draw power only when active, like thrusters or refineries. Each tick of the universe, the game adds up the power draw for all of the spacecraft's components. Then the ship attempts to meet the demand using solar power, then battery power, and finally by pulling power off the reactors, which consume uranium to generate power. Any power that's left over is routed to any batteries that are in recharge mode. Each power source has advantages and disadvantages, so let's look at each separately and then explain how they can be fit together. Let's start with reactors, as they're probably the simplest power supply. There are four reactors in Space Engineers. There's a large reactor and a small reactor each for large ships and small ships. From a power perspective, the only difference between these reactors is the maximum amount of power they can supply. The small small ship reactor supplies up to 100 kilowatts, and the large small ship reactor supplies 3.5 megawatts. The small and large large ship reactors supply 5 megawatts and 100 megawatts respectively. Each reactor only supplies an amount of power proportional to the total reactor demand over all of the reactor supply. All the reactors in Space Engineers consume fuel at the same rate, which is one uranium per megawatt hour supplied. Thus, when you have a small beacon or other pilotless craft, you can calculate how long its reactor will last by dividing the number of megawatts the ship draws by the number of uranium units you put in its reactor. Next, let's talk a little bit about solar panels. Solar panels only need line of sight to the sun to generate power. They only come in two sizes, large ship and small ship. Large ship solar panels generate a maximum of 120 kilowatts each, while small ship panels generate up to 30 kilowatts each. Two factors affect how much power the solar panel actually generates. The first factor is how much of the panel is in shade. If half of a panel has a shadow cast on it by an astronaut, an asteroid, a ship, or something else, that panel will only generate half as much power. The second factor is the angle of the panel to the sun. Facing directly into the sun, the panel generates its maximum amount of power. Facing 90 degrees to one side or edge onto the sun, the panel will only generate a few watts at most. Anything in between will cause the panel to generate some fraction of its maximum power. The actual power generation is equal to the absolute value of the cosine of the angle between the panel's current and optimal orientation. Finally, we have batteries. Batteries don't provide any power in and of themselves, but store power from reactors or solar cells. On a large ship, a battery can store up to 1 megawatt hour of energy, which can charge or discharge at up to 4 megawatts. On a small ship, a battery can store up to 360 kilowatt hours of energy, which can charge or discharge at 1.44 megawatts. Both of these systems can charge or discharge in 15 minutes under maximum load. At our base on Beachhead, we have a small reactor brought down from the spawn ship. The major draws on our base are the refinery and the assembler. When they're both running, the refinery and the assembler each draw 560 kilowatts. In addition, the base now has an antenna that draws considerable power. Beacons and antennas both draw different amounts of power depending on their range. Beacons draw 1 watt for every 5 meters they broadcast. Antennas draw 1 watt for every quarter of a meter they broadcast. With our antenna set to 50 kilometers, it draws an additional 200 kilowatts. Adding the antenna to our refinery and assembler, the total base power draw is 1.32 megawatts. We have about 2 units of uranium, which will drive the 1.32 megawatts of the base for just over 90 minutes. It would take 11 large solar panels to supply the base that amount of power. Unfortunately, 11 large solar panels would require 35.2 ingots of platinum and 211.2 ingots of gold, plus some silicon, just for the solar cells. That is far more than we have at this point in colonization, so we're going to have to rely on uranium-fueled reactors for a while. Using the reactors also means we're trading uranium for every ingot we refine, and some of those conversion rates are considerable. A refinery can refine 6.3 uranium ingots an hour, during which it will consume 0.56 uranium from the reactor. Thus, we're only really able to gain 5.74 uranium an hour. We expend 0.11 ingots of uranium for every ingot of gold we refine. Platinum is even worse, with us spending 0.22 ingots of uranium for every ingot of platinum we refine. Until we can get at least 5 solar panels online, we'll be using at least some uranium for every ingot we refine. 
Indeed, until we have solar power, everything we do will consume uranium. Every time we build a component, every time we broadcast a signal, every time we fire a thruster, we're chewing through our supply of uranium ingots. Running completely out of uranium will kill our colony, as we won't be able to produce any more fuel. As such, it's critical to make sure we always have at least some uranium around to kickstart a refining system. As a form of insurance, we can put a small amount of uranium in a ship we don't use or in a container on the base that isn't connected to the conveyor network. We'll revisit this topic in future episodes when we start looking at using solar power and batteries as our primary source of energy. Until next time, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.